Hello, welcome to this Fix It Friday where we're going to try and fix my ring tire inflator. So let's roll titles. Hello and welcome to this Fix It Friday video. My name is Kip Hakes and you're very welcome. Now, what do we have to look at today? Well, it's my ring tire inflator. And basically, it's dead. Now, it did show some signs of life the last time I tried to use it, but as soon as I started to inflate my tires, it just sort of cut out and the display just sort of faded out to nothing. So this obviously runs off a 12 volt supply from the cigarette lighter or the 12 volt accessory socket, whatever you want to call it in the car. And um, obviously I don't have that on my bench, but I do have this power adapter, which essentially simulates the voltage coming from a cigarette lighter socket. So let's plug it in, nothing. Power button does nothing. Light button does nothing. So it appears to be dead. Now, it does mention that there's a 10 amp fuse in this somewhere. So it could just be as easy as the fuse dying, but I don't know, I think something might have blown the fuse. Now the fuses are usually in this bit here. So maybe if I pop this open, we can have a little look and see if it's just something as simple as a fuse. I mean, I hope not because that would make it a really boring video. Right, so I'll crack open my iFixit tool case because I'm an official fixer now. I've got an iFixit screwdriver and everything. Spudger, spudger, spudger. Okay. Oh, we have a fuse. And I don't know, is that broken? Looks like it might be, you know? Yes. Yes, that is very much broken. Well, that's not very interesting. I was hoping to sort of do a whole fix it on this. Let me just double check it is broken. Got a multimeter in continuity. Yeah, okay. It's the fuse, apparently. But what I could do to double check, I suppose, is put some voltage into this through my uh, bench power supply, and we can just double check. That probably seems like a good idea. So obviously I need to order a fuse. I don't have any 10 amp fuses, and I don't have any fuses in this size. It is quite little. How big is it? Yeah, I'm gonna put some voltage into it just to make sure because obviously something blew the fuse and I'm not entirely sure what. Right, actually, before I do anything, I can never remember when it comes to these, which is the positive and which is the negative because uh, I don't really want to destroy it in the process. Okay, let me have a little look. Um, 12 volt. Okay, so uh, positive is the tip and negative is the sides. Okay, so um, I've got to try and put some voltage in. Positive is the tip. Oh. Okay. I don't know what CFO means. Right, let me try and do this one-handed. Oh, hang on. Ah, interesting. As soon as I turn the compressor on, it's sort of shorted out. Okay. 
we've got something a little bit more interesting now. Is that like a compressor bolt maybe? So the light works. Can alter the pressure okay. Well, this suddenly got a little bit more interesting. Oh, it seems I need a really long and thin screwdriver to get down the hole. It's annoying. Let's undo this bit to start with. I don't think I've got anything that long and thin, annoyingly. Yeah, I'm wondering if CFO is like a compressor fault, maybe? It's because it's definitely tripping, isn't it? It's, that's the beeping on my uh, bench power supply and the sort of click of a relay makes it sound like it's actually tripping. Is there just going to be a load of cable under here? Yes, okay. Yeah, there we go. Well, we can just take that bit off. Well, there doesn't appear to be all that much to it, so that's probably a good thing. Oh, and I've uncovered some more screws as well. Right, let me go and see if I can find a really long and thin screwdriver. Hmm. So I've come up with a slightly uh, Heath Robinson approach. I've got my bit here from the screwdriver set, and there's also this other bit, which seems to sort of put that and that together. So, aha, I can put my ratchet screwdriver thing in and make a long screwdriver, hopefully. While I'm struggling with this, I'll uh, give a shout out to all of those members of the channel. So uh, this week the members are. First up, we've got those wonderful Kip fans who are no-name added, Matt Lovies, JRC Electrical, For The Burbs, Tim Salt, Mark C and Thor. Then we've got those superb early birds who are Roberta Gorenthamson, Stesstix Fix, Dean Ball, Gary Bannum, The Coder and Sean at Cablesmith Electrical. Then big love to those Kip lovers who are the amazing Richard R. Blaster, Bella Webster, Lawrence and Adventure Rachel. And then a massive, massive, massive thank you to those Kip Nutters who are Ellis the DJ and the wonderful Becky. And it's recently been Becky's birthday, so thank you so much for your support, Becky. And happy birthday. Anyway, on with this. Ah, right, we're in. Have to go down to the shed, find some little screwdrivers. Okay. So it all actually looks relatively simple. So we've got this board here where the power comes in and here is our compressor. Now I'm assuming we could put voltage straight to that and see if it's working. Let's see, work out what we've got. So here it goes off into this little pipe and I assume that's obviously the pressure sensor. So, well this is telling the board to stop the compressor when the right pressure is reached. So this is obviously the main power board. So this is where the feed comes into the board. And then we've got a little output here to the light. This goes to the main board here which powers the display and also because it's got Bluetooth, it obviously powers the Bluetooth. And then we've just got this direct connection to the fan, to the compressor. So what could have gone wrong? Could the pressure sensor be faulty? Maybe. Could this relay be faulty? Possibly, I assume that's a relay. I mean, this board doesn't look great. I mean, there's lots of bridged connections. I assume it's meant to be like that, maybe. I mean, I've 
I find it weird that the positive and negative to the pump are actually being bridged by this component here. That seems really weird. Can't see quite what that says. I mean, is this actually a relay? Because it does mention 125 volts. <sighs> I don't really know what I'm doing, um, as you probably realized. But what I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put some power into the compressor and see if it does anything. So I'll put a bit of tape on the side where the black wire goes so I know the difference between positive and negative. And yeah, we'll just stick a bit of voltage in and see if that fires up. And I mean, if I take, if I take the compressor out of the circuit, will it still blow the fuse? Will it still foul up the power supply? That's, that's an interesting thing. So we'll take, because it seems to be when you fire the compressor, that's when it dies. But yeah, let's um, just start simple and desolder the compressor. So our compressor is removed from the circuit. So in theory now, I should just be able to inject some DC power into it and it should run. Oh. Yeah. Whoa, little spark. There we go. We found out what the fault is. It's the compressor. Oh, it did feel a bit seized. It wasn't moving to start with. What if we put the voltage back into it? Right. Did you see that? It's span. It span momentarily and then stopped. Let's try that again. See if I can get it to do it. Okay. It's like it's stuck or something. It definitely seems to just be the motor seizing for whatever reason. So what I think I'm going to do is this is the gearbox that's on top and I think I'm just going to unscrew it from the motor and then maybe look inside the motor and see if there's anything obvious. Um, there are some part numbers and things on the side of the motor and they didn't really yield all that much although there was a listing on eBay for a motor similar looking to this is actually designed for drills which might work but yeah I think I'm gonna pop off this top bit here and um, see if we uh, can get inside the motor I've seen Vince go inside motors and clean them before so you know might work I mean, I imagine most of these sort of products have similar, don't they? Sort of like a kind of similar motor in. So we might be able to fashion one out of a, another one. I don't know. All right. Aha. So basically all that we've got here is just a pump. So it's just pressing, spinning round, making quite a satisfying sound. Yeah, I don't, it feels a bit notchy. I don't know if it should feel not notchy. Right, that's actually, while I'm, let's move some of this out of the way. Something that I did try, because basically the camera overheated, overheated, but I did try running it I did try turning the actual unit on by putting power into it and it came up with the CF0 which 
must be a compressor fault note, but when I press the button to effectively start the compressor, because the compressor was disconnected, it didn't reset. So I do think it's this motor that is at fault. Right, let's um, just, without any load, let's put some power into it. No, you can, it really snags with quite a force. It's definitely something not right. But it's actually quite exciting because I've never looked inside a motor before. So I think we've got to get these little tabs up and I think this should just pull out. I sound very confident. for the life of me, get these tabs to move. These little plastic welds. Well, that wasn't successful in any way, shape or form. So basically I've been trying to get these tabs up around here and uh, they just won't move. They're just stuck solid. So I actually spoke to Vince and he recommended maybe dremeling them off, um, which is a great idea, but I don't actually have a dremel cutter that is small enough to get into there. So I've been doing a little bit of investigating and I think I can get a replacement motor of a very similar size and uh, with the cog on it already um, from China. Uh, but it will take until February or March to get here. So I just thought I'd show you something that I found and then maybe we can revisit it when the new motor has arrived and uh, I can also get a small cutting disc so we can do a full autopsy on this motor. But this is quite interesting because I just thought the motor had seized or it, it just couldn't go round. But I found something quite strange. So I need to set my bench power supply to around about 1.1 volts. It's very specific, but if I do that, the motor spins, albeit very, very slowly, compared to probably how fast it's normally meant to spin. But even if I crank up the voltage a teeny, weedy, weedy bit, so I'm at like one and a half volts now. Oh, making a liar out of me. This is interesting. Right, let's go up to two volts yeah there we go it shorts out the um, shorts out the power supply and just stops dead it's really really strange so what what do you think's happened to the motor because it's not obviously it's not fully seized because it does turn round a low voltage, but anything higher than about one and a half volts, and this is a 12 volt mo motor, it just stops and shorts out. It's a bit of a fail in the respect that I haven't got the device back up and running, but I'm actually quite pleased that through a bit of troubleshooting and a bit of logical thinking, it's actually, I actually found the faulty part quite quickly, and uh, it just happens to me. <laughs> literally the main component so uh, yeah I mean I think I'm a little bit annoyed that 
this has probably only been used about twice yeah probably twice and it's spent the rest of the time in the carry case in the boot ready to be used and um, yeah I've had it for about two years I think it's a little bit over two years but that's not great is it I mean I think they retail for around about 30 or 40 pounds so it's not like it's been put under any sort of uh, commercial type stress it's just it's just been used a couple of times to get the tires to the right pressure and then put away in its carry case so yeah I think what I'll say is uh, we'll keep an eye out for an update when the motor comes and also we should have a full autopsy on this motor at some point but I think once I've dremeled these off even if I found the problem or you know cleaned it up I probably wouldn't be able to get it back together because this metal around it is just so hard so yeah a bit of a fail but we've learned something ring tire inflators are shit <laughs> well on that professional note there's nothing much else for me to say apart from don't forget to like and subscribe but for now it's game over